Let's just quite a fine here. attire you have on today. <laughs> Thank you. You know, always, always the best. I am interviewing a Yale medical student. So, uh, how was your drive over here today? Uh, well, I didn't really drive. I just walked over from the room in that corner over there. Oh, fascinating. So, as a backdrop, you are the medical student that got into uh, Yale. The Yale medical student, as they call those individuals that get into the school. That is correct. Um, how has that been? How has, how has Yale treated you? Uh, Yale has treated me very nicely. Um, you know, I can't really say anything bad about them. They have been very supportive. Hmm. Um, obviously, it's a top-notch hospital, top-notch medical school. Um, and they have all the resources you need to succeed. So, um, overall, it's treated me very well. Hmm. Top-notch? Mm-hmm. So you think you're smart, huh? Uh, I wouldn't say smart exactly. Again, there's different spheres of intelligence, so mm. you can be uh, smart in one way and not another. Mm. And also, I think that um, doing well or excelling at certain things is really a product of hard work. And so nothing exactly uh, at Yale necessitates you being smart. It just requires you working hard. Okay. So do you think being in an Ivy League school has uh, changed you in any way? Um, I think being at any school changes you in several ways. And um, I think just medical, I can't really differentiate between medical school itself and being at an Ivy League medical school. Um, but if I had to um, parse for some kind of answer in there, I would say that it does kind of give you a grander sense of the world in that you see a lot of ambitious people doing great things and um, it inspires you. So I see you using a lot of words like posh and grand. You think you you use you use those words. You use those words. I I don't recall using those words in our conversation. Oh. Well, nevertheless, you think you're better than everybody, don't you? Um in what way? In every way. I wouldn't say so, no. Despite being posh and grand i never said those words you did i didn't so since being in medical school yale medical school have you dressed any differently uh actually that's a good question because um when i completed uh college you know there's a period between medical school and college i uh went to malls went to uh thrift stores and uh got a new wardrobe so uh I and uh, new- now you go to gucci armani Louis Vuitton. Um, I prefer Payless and um, J.C. Penny, mm-hmm. but uh, I do sometimes walk into those stores. Strange, considering both went bankrupt and are no longer exist. That's why I said I went. Hmm. Where do you shop now? I don't shop anymore due to the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Smart answer. <clears throat> You have heard of the George Bush alumni underground parties, I'm sure. How many of them have you been to and what drugs have you done? Um, I have actually not heard of those underground parties, to be quite honest with you. I know I do know mm, he was he attended Yale. Um, but I'm not familiar with any of those drugs he's taken. I've not taken any of uh any recreational drugs at Yale and um I don't know of any underground parties. Uh, how would I know about an underground party if it's underground? Assuming you would be part of the underground scene is what I'm saying, considering you're from I'm an Ivy I'm not school. familiar with any underground scene. Hmm. How many drugs do you do a day? Um, now, are we talking about recreational? Are we talking about medicinal? Any. Um, zero. So, like I said, you have been using these words like posh and grand. I have not. So let me try this at another angle. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think, hypothetically... What would help you contact the aliens better, DMDT or marijuana? The aliens, um, by putting that uh, uh, phrase, the, in front of alien, it implies that there are specific aliens that we've already encountered. Right. And uh, that's a assumption in your answer that I don't think has any merit at this point. Um, but assuming that we were to find these hypothetical aliens and um, we were trying to use drugs as a proxy or as a 
um, stimulant in our own minds to contact them, uh, I would probably say that water works best. Water. Yes, water is essential for all of life. So if we had proof of water that we could show them, they'd probably be quite intrigued. Mm. I was more talking about consuming the product, putting you into a state of having a medium to contact them. Mm -hmm. I Uh, believe we all drink water and do not contact aliens. You're not so smart, are you? I would um, rather go for a Slurpee. I believe that that is the way to contact them. A Slurpee from (laughs) 7-Eleven. So we keep on circling back to these words, posh and grand and magnificent, and I'm amazing. Um, I've never said any of those words. In this interview. Let's say you did, because you did. Um, How do we solve racism? Um, I'm failing to link the... uh, I'm failing to see the link between the two halves of what you're saying here. Well, what I mean is, if you're so posh and so grand and so smart that you keep on putting forward, you should be able to tell us the solutions to our questions. I never referred to myself as any of those adjectives. Oh, did you? Uh, I did not. Did, oh, did you? I did not. Mm. But you still would say you're way smarter than anybody else. So maybe you could elucidate some of these answers to these questions. I believe we already went over the smarter um, phrase. Uh, but in terms of answering the question, how do we solve racism? I think right. it's a very complex, multifaceted issue that can be broken down into several parts. Um, again, I wouldn't even uh, presuppose that I have all of the answers. I think this is a problem for a greater uh, society and a nation to solve rather than an individual uh, deemed as smart to come up with answers. Uh, so I don't think that it would be uh, our time best served answering that question. Basically, you don't have the answer and uh, <clears throat> you're not as smart as uh, you say you are. Um, let's move on. Are you a hunter or a gatherer? Um, Is this more of a symbolic uh, question? Because if we're referring to the actual definitions that we've learned in elementary school, I would uh, classify myself as neither of those. I'm talking about in a symbolic sense. Are you a hunter or a gatherer? Mm -hmm. I would uh, probably classify myself as a hunter. Wow. Um, because a big man, huh? Uh, not necessarily. I don't think it's more about, it's not about physical strength. I think it's more of the ideology and the, uh, pursuit driven type of, uh, individuals are more hunters while the, uh, gatherers are more of those, uh, well, I won't go into the gatherers. Right. Do you just, why don't you just come out and say that you're trying to say you have brawn and brains? I never said I had brawn, and I never said I had brains. Hmm. Seems like you're really, throughout this interview, trying to push the agenda that you are stronger than everybody else, you're smarter, you're faster, you can actually catch prey with your own hands and faster, cook it. sir? Yes. When did I say I was faster? So, what exactly is your problem? Uh, well, as a Yale medical student, I have a lot of problems. Is there any particular one you'd like to discuss? So what is the number one thing that you've learned in Ivy School that you want to pass on to other individuals? Uh, That's a really good question. I think that, um, again, I wouldn't differentiate Ivy School from any other school. I think just medical school in general uh, teaches uh, teaches you a lot about being a better person, being a more um, well-rounded person, and knowing what matters most in life. So if there's anything that I could um, pass on or teach other people watching this uh, interview, it would be to... um, What? (laughs) We're waiting. (laughs) It would be to uh, focus on the importance of uh, family. That's what you got out of Yale. Ivy League Med School. Yes. The importance of family. Yes. Which we learned back in kindergarten. Um, but again, there's different layers and depths oh. to every principle. Oh, is there? So, uh, yes, there is. Okay. And what depth of layer are you at at Yale? <clears throat> How deep does that go? The seventh layer. <laughs> How many total layers are there? Nineteen. 
How does one, if if a <laughs> Ivy League medical student who's so smart and strong and fast, get able only to get to the seventh layer, mm-hmm. how do you get to the nineteenth layer? You have to open the uh, six gates. So what does a Yale medical student like you do for your free time? Um, that's a question I actually get a lot. Uh, I think it's no different than anyone else in medical school or you know anyone else in graduate school. Um, obviously, it's been affected greatly by the pandemic. Uh, so lately, I've just been um, watching TV, playing games, exercising, playing with my dog, um, making videos, um, so that kind of stuff. Okay. Sounds like it's more... A little too normal for an Ivy League student. Is there an agenda beneath all of this? Is there something you're pushing forward to kind of participate in the new world order? A lot of people out there think that uh, Yale, Harvard, these people are pushing out individuals like yourself that uh, might be involved in creating a new world order and you people are going to control the uh, universe. No, that I do not uh, indulge in any of those activities during my free time. <laughs> but can you elucidate uh, some of these things? What kind of cults are you participating in what rituals are you doing what animals have you slaughtered personally and taken to the altar and drank their blood and then cooked and eaten the meat with your own hands um well we did and during anatomy class we did cut into a cadaver so the human body but it was already uh deceased it was donated to us um and that is something that uh really helps with our educational uh endeavors so it is um you know, it can be a little shocking at first, but it is something you uh, get used to. But we did not skin any animals or any of that other ritualistic behavior that you're describing. So I'll leave our viewers here with one last question. What motivates you? We understand you're already at the apex of humanity, one of the top 0.01%. You've said it yourself. I've You've never indulged that. that you're posh and grand and fast and strong. Never said it. What motivates you? Um, so that, again, is a very broad question. What motivates me, I think, is several things. I think, like I said, family is very important. I think contributions to the world, my patients, others is very important to me. I think that learning about the world is something else that motivates me, um, both with my medical education and beyond. I think people just limit learning to the educational space, but I think throughout life, life is a learning process. Um, So I think that is something I would um, say motivates motivates me, and um, um, I guess that's also a sense of community. Does the blood curdling screams of young children being sacrificed uh, in these Ivy League rituals is that also a motivating factor? I've not heard any of these blood curdling screams i'm not sure where you're getting your information from sir um but george bush uh, george senior and junior bush um well i can't say i'm too familiar with their uh evidence but uh, no that does not motivate me and i'd be quite shocked if it had motivated any ivy league students um what exactly where exactly did he say this in his inaugural speech 2001 I um, can't say I'm familiar with it. Well, you know, in the end of the day, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, mm-hmm. getting some time. Getting to, to know you as well. Thank you. Um, we might go ahead and do this again, maybe with uh, future guests, but you've been a, a great guest, and uh, we thank you for joining uh, my talk. Uh, um, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I was glad to uh, answer some of those questions, although I hope we can get the facts straight um, between what I did say and didn't say. Hopefully this isn't edited in any such manner, such that the community sees this as a uh, attack on me. But uh, thank you. We'll see you in the next one.